Hello and welcome back my partners in crime, welcome back to Murder Analyzed for another true crime. Now this crime is a 2018 crime, it's from UK. Uh, the crime was committed, the murder was committed on the early hours, I think about 7.30am on the 23rd of December 2018. Now the perpetrators in this case were uh, Neil Maxwell and Luke Pearson. Now um, the reason I've called this case, I suppose, the killers of Benefit Street is because uh, Neil was, or Neil Maxwell, was like this lovable rogue that was portrayed on this TV documentary show, you know, real life show. It's like the Kardashians, but on benefits, if you see what I mean. So this is when it was sort of, this is what it was sort of portraying. You know, 90% of this street that these people came from, this area, 90% of them were unemployed. Now, not through any fault of their own, most of them, most of them because this is an area of Britain that was, um, you know, hard done by, I suppose. There was no money around and there's no jobs around and there's no infrastructure in these cities and these towns and these places where these people come from. So they found herself on a benefit. And this was a Channel 4 show that literally showed the life of people on benefits and this was filmed from about 2015 I think sort of time and uh, Neil Maxwell was in I think season two of that but he was portrayed as this lovable rogue as I said but you know this this man was a sadistic horrible man really and it, they also sort of nicknamed him the king of kids now <laughs> when we talk about the king of kids this man when he was sentenced actually um, for the murder of Lee Cooper, this poor man that was murdered by these pair uh, in 2018. He was 40 year old, so the king of kids. And if you look at his co-defendant, you know, Luke Pearson, he was only 19 at the time. So this Neil Maxwell, you know, portrayed himself as the king of kids. He was a grown man. He was a grown man. So there's a lot to this case as we go through this case. As I said, it was a horrific murder of this poor gentleman, you know, uh, Lee Cooper. It, it was uncalled for, really. But when we look at the history of Neil Maxwell, and we look at his background and how he come up, this drug smoking, you know, cannabis smoking, I mean, I think he was on crack and everything else, it was said here, how he was even abusive to his girlfriends and stuff like that. And then from 5 a.m. that morning, he had also attacked two other people leading up now to where he then um, got hold of Lee Cooper and killed him. Now I have got some CCT footage within this um, case and it shows where Neil has been um, arrested because at the time when he was arrested uh, Lee Cooper was still alive. So it looked like and he thought that he would be on a charge of probably GBH. Um, this was this man's mentality, but also in this CCTV footage or of in the police station, you will see how his persona changes once he finds out that Lee Cooper is dead and now he faces a murder charge. And now this man, this 40 year old man, I'm going to keep saying he's 40 because it's really relevant here, the, the lifestyle that this man was portraying, he was just a fuck, he really was. And he deserved for the life imprisonment that he got. Now, Luke Pearson was with him on that day throughout these crimes and previous crimes in that morning that they had tried to assault or they had assaulted people. And uh, in the end, Liz got 24 years for that. I mean, Liz's defence at that time was diminished responsibility. But you've got to think, you know, when you do these sort of murders in front of many, many people in a crowded street really of this this area that is usually full of children and full of everybody else one there was witnesses that were distraught at trying to stop this murder um, as it was going on and as we go into the details of this how Lee was murdered it's really shocking really to think that these people thought that they could do this in front of residents in this area and think that nothing was going to happen to them so it's about the mentality of that and actually, I suppose when we look at it, how we think this Neil 
Maxwell must have been thinking because he thought he was a star. You know, he had 15 minutes of fame really on this, you know, benefit program, Benefit Street program, and it went to his head. Now on this Benefit Street program, he also would show on TV, live TV, his marijuana grows. He would also talk and openly take drugs on this show. He was fiery, so he would sometimes be quite aggressive and shout and stuff like this on that show, but still came across as this lovable rogue, really. But it was outside of that show, what was really going on outside in these areas that this man thought he was a king of, um, really, really portrays what he really was. So, you know, he had his 15 minutes of fame and now he's spending 30 years in prison for a murder, horrific murder, of Lee Cooper. And this is really what this case is about. So let's have a look at the background, really, of this man, because the mentality of this man, really. So he was this self-styled, wasn't he, king of kids, as we used to say to people. And he had a flat, actually, and this was in um, Stockton on Tees. And it was on this estate, or on the Tillery estate, I think, in Stockton on Tees at that time. And they were lots of kids, and I mean lots of kids, because in this area, the crime rate in this area, um, it's like most estates and areas throughout the UK, especially around this time and even now, to tell you the truth, uh, lots of antisocial behaviour and stuff like this goes on on these estates. Now, this estate was no different than probably any other estate. But when you start to see him on this TV programme, he had really lots of kids, even before that TV programme, congregating outside his flat and stuff like that. It was a place where he... Um, encourage kids to come and also he was selling drugs and taking drugs and God knows what else and stolen goods and he was promoting this actually throughout the whole time so his mentality is showing that yes he's an older man but he was definitely hanging around with very young children and influencing them kids to do things really to tell you the truth criminal um, things and um, he seemed to be empowered by this you know um, he didn't have a lot else I think he was a warehouse worker at one point and then he he wasn't you know as i said there wasn't a lot of jobs in this area but mainly he was on benefit street because he was claiming a benefit so that's why he was on there so he had this flat at that time at the time of his arrest actually he had no fixed abode so he either didn't pay his rent or he was thrown out probably because the antisocial behavior that he was causing within this flat and um so then he went on to, as I said, no fixed abode, which means he had no address at the time of his arrest that was a permanent address, meaning he was probably on the streets or sleeping, you know, what they call sofa surfing or just staying in people's houses at the time of his arrest. So let's think about this Maxwell. So by the time the show there in May 2015, uh, 2015, he was also by this stage a cocaine addict as well. So you know, listen, we're not saying that cocaine will make you go and do all these crimes, but the mentality of this man on top of the drugs this man took and everything else, he, it, you know, and he was terrorising actually um, this neighbourhood as well. If he did something wrong or whatever, he sort of thought he could come along and sort of dictate to you what to do. People were a bit scared of him, mainly the younger kids in this area, and because of the following he had, but when this aired in May 2015, all of a sudden, this boy didn't have just the youths that were looking up to him in the street. He now made quite an impact actually on the TV because he was this outgoing, lovable rogue. And I suppose it gives us these programs an insight, doesn't it? How do other people live? And that's what it was meant to be, like a fly on the wall sort of uh, look into these lives of these people. So he did gain lots of fans at that time and I think this is also what made this boy think he was untouchable because of his 15 minutes of fame from this program uh, it's you know fame can do some funny things to you but I think this boy was always probably from when he was born was on a downhill run and would always have ended up in prison for one reason or another this wasn't his first stint in prison this murder he'd already bit served time before for other things uh, like assault and stuff with a deadly weapon he was well known at that point even behind the scenes of this 2015 tv show that he was also really 
known to use a standing knife to slice people. That was his mark that he used to like to leave. So if you disrespected him or you did something he didn't like, he would attack you with a standing knife, knife and he would cause you some serious damage and leave long lasting effects on your life because a Stanley knife is not a thing that can be sewn up that easily without leaving lots of scarring. So this man was already known to be very, very violent. So I think at this time as well, he had just either finished a two and a half year sentence for a knife wound. I think he attacked someone in this block of flats that he had lived in. And I think it was a 24 centimeter long slice that he had done. I think he sliced a person three times with his standing knife and he got two and a half years. No, it's not enough. What deterrent is that really when we're talking about, you know, knife crime? But I suppose as knife crime has become more prevalent in the last few years and sentences are meant to be getting harsher, more harsher than the two and a half years, and he wouldn't have served two and a half years, would he? He would have served about nine months maybe for that, you know, you know, if, if that really, when you think about it. But this is the sort of character that was going on behind the scenes. But this man, even though he had this, was still given this role on this TV show because they just really didn't know enough about him um, to really understand that he was actually quite a nasty piece of work. So again, in 2016, after he, his, the programme had aired and he had done his little stint, you know, to make him um, come across as this lovable rogue on this uh, Channel 4 programme, he then served, I think, another two and a half years for a serious brutal attack then on his former lover. So he was a, you know, domestic violence abuser as well, right? This man is everything. He had no respect for women. He had no respect for the community he lived in. He had no respect for children. He had no respect for anyone, actually. To tell you the truth, I don't think the bloke had much respect for himself, really. But, um, you know, two and a half years, again, he gets, and I think there was a lot of things in this, um, where he threw stuff at her and hit her and stuff like this in this um, attack on this young girl. But again, we have, don't we, a man that has gone inside and served another two and a half years, probably another nine months, been released out, back onto the streets, thinking he's really untouchable. You know, we keep putting these criminals in and out, don't we, a prison, but we don't really do anything significant to them. So this man's already attacked someone with a knife, uh, a standing knife is a deadly weapon, it's a very serious weapon and he should have got longer than that. I think now the minimum for knife crime should be seven years just for holding that knife, let alone using it and causing GBH and ABH on someone. And then we have him now um, just after this show's aired in 2016, so he hadn't been out long at all from 2015 to 2016. Now a brutal attack on a woman, a brutal attack on his ex-lover, a woman. So this is the real character of this lovable rogue from this Channel 4 TV documentary, Benefit Street. Shocking, really. And this boy had, as I say, quite a lot of fans. His defense for the crime of this brutal attack on his um, girlfriend at that time, or ex-partner, or ex-lover, whatever you want to call it, was that he was high on spice. Right now, we all know about spice, and we all know what spice can do, and everything else. Plus, there was a mixture, I think, of everything else that he was taking. Right, but it's not an excuse when you're going to have, you know, commit violence towards people to say that you are taking some drug or whatever. It, it's just not a defence. But of course, they must have listened to him to have only given him two and a half years. He was meant to also push his ex-partner down the stairs, swung her around by her hair, threw a television at her literally threw the television at her. If it had hit her, that would have done some serious damage. And I think in the next case, when we look at his next crimes that he's done, at a TV stand and that even come into that one. Uh, and this was in a home that they shared together. So again, it probably wasn't his home, it was her home. And that's probably why now on these next lot of murders that this man had no fixed abode because he shouldn't have been there, it wasn't his property. So he says, when the woman tried to climb out the window, Maxwell pulled her back, pushing her face down before throwing a car seat at her. Now, a car seat, when we talk about a car seat, you're talking about children, aren't you? Within this household, really, of this violence 
with spice and God knows what else, you know, is going on in this household. Anyway, he's throwing the car seat at her. And then he poured a can of pineapple juice over her head. And that's what the court heard. So, listen, he was brutal in this attack. It doesn't read as brutal as it is. But if you are a woman and you have experienced domestic violence from a man that is high on spice and everything else that he's putting into his body because he's already shown you on this show how much he takes of cocaine and marijuana and anything else he can get in his body. Now he's mixing in some spice because it's cheap. Let's be honest, that's why most of them are on it because um, it's cheap. It can also really cause you to have some real issues when it comes to controlling what you do. Give him that. But even so, you know, it's not an excuse to hurt people, is it? Don't take spice, really. Don't take drugs. If you can't handle what it's doing to you, stop taking it. That's my advice to anybody that thinks that spice is a good thing to take. It is not. It's life destroying. And in the end, it will kill you, really, or kill somebody else because of the effects that it has. So, yes, this car seat was thrown at her. The TV was thrown at her. You know, it's dragged her around the room by her hair. And... Um, He's been then arrested for that. But then we have to talk about Maxwell, how, and one of his excuses, right? Not only because he's on the drugs, but why he's taking more drugs. He says he's ramped up his drug taking because of the fame from this TV show, right? This Channel 4 documentary, because he's famous. It's, you know, it's, it's hard to handle, isn't it, being famous? It's ramped it up. You know, he was quite happy to go out there and, you know, get the drugs and do everything else and take them but you know he needs to take more because of the fame that he had got was affecting him okay i mean you've got to think that this man from start to finish and you'll see this through the um case of the murder of lee um cooper is a bullshitter right he's going to come out with loads of different things to try and save himself and there's always an excuse and it's never neil maxwell's fault there's always something else that's at fault here and now he's trying to blame this tv you know show for making him take more drugs and that's what made him take more drugs and then and then um literally attack the girlfriend so let's talk about this extensive rap sheet before all this so, okay he was charged with assault and false imprisonment um he's then is also i think robbery fraud resisting arrest dealing drugs which we know he did because he was even doing that on the TV show. This is how blatant this man was. Um, shining like laser pens and stuff at police and helicopters. That's now illegal and you shouldn't be doing it. It's very dangerous, these pilots, to have these sort of things shown in their face. We don't have much of that then, but you can see this man, his mentality. Now, this isn't a kid we're talking about. I keep coming back to his age. He would have been 35, 36, 37, 38. At around this time this is not a child this is not a delinquent well he is a delinquent he's um, but an adult delinquent so it I'm trying to build you the background of this man so you can understand his mentality when he attacked Lee Cooper in the way that he did so now let's really talk about how this crime the murder charge now comes about so it's December 23rd just before Christmas I think it was 2018 now there had been some issues right with Lee Cooper and some other people and um, Lee Cooper it was alleged that he had or he was one of many people that were starting trouble and and um, you know attacking sort of people living in this Stockton hotel right now some of these people that were living in this hotel and these would have been probably either homeless people or you know waiting for accommodation and stuff like that in this hotel now lee cooper and others were meant to be sent in or treating these people with some disrespect that was what was alleged by <laughs> neil maxwell now as i say with neil maxwell neil maxwell was a bloody liar and you can't believe because he's just going to say anything really to get out of this murder charge then you have to think this when we talk about Lee Cooper. I'm not saying Luke, Luke, Lee Cooper was um, a great bloke. I don't know him. But whatever someone does, you don't deserve to be murdered in the way that he was murdered. 
So I'm going to read you some texts now, okay, which came from, and there is some, um, you know, profanities in there, I suppose, because this is the way these people spoke to each other. So after hearing that Lee Cooper was among these men that had attacked a friend living at this Stockton hotel, he sent a message saying that I will push a blade straight through your scatty, that scatty effing Lee, right? Meaning that we already know that Neil Maxwell used to like to use standing knives to attack people and he was already threatening then to attack Lee Cooper with this um, blade because of the, uh, and we have to say allegations because uh, even though I think Lee Cooper was arrested and he was released at 1am that morning for this, um, because now he's dead, that case couldn't go ahead. So we didn't really know the full situation. This one I'm saying alleged, right? Because it has to be alleged because Lee Cooper is no longer around to answer uh, any charge that may have come from that assault or anything else with others to his what part he took in it. But Neil Maxwell took it upon himself to make sure that he singled out Lee Cooper from amongst others um, and that he was then going to attack him with a knife. So it was already said. Now, Lee Cooper was 43 at the time. As I said, we have this man who is about 39, 40 now, right? So these two men right, Neil and Lee, were actually about the same age. We're not talking about children, we are now talking about grown men. But as I said, Lee Cooper is no longer here. He was arrested, I think, for that assault, but bowed at 1 a.m. in the morning. And really, that was then the end of it for Lee Cooper, because the minute Lee Cooper was assaulted and murdered later on in that morning, he couldn't answer any questions, so therefore we cannot say that Lee Cooper actually did attack anybody because he's not here to defend himself is he he's just not so we can't say that so as i've said you know i don't know whether Luke, lee cooper was an outstanding member of society but it shouldn't matter if he was or not he didn't deserve to die in the way that he was murdered so again about 5 30 a.m so we have lee cooper now being released from the police cells at you know 1 a.m. at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, maybe they live a, a, a different lifestyle to me. Maxwell's injured friend, so Neil's injured friend, I think this one from the uh, Stockton Hotel, was in the town centre and he was chased down in that town centre by um, Lee Cooper and heard someone shout, that's the man that grasped you up. Now, grasped you up means he's rung the police, hasn't he? And, and Lee Cooper's been arrested that morning. So now they're chasing him down. But within minutes, Neil Maxwell, with cocaine and cannabis in his system, really, was literally on a warpath. He had heard all this going on. The Texas was sort of coming through. He is now coked out of his head with marijuana and anything else he decided to take. We know he likes spice and anything he could get his hands on. And he decided, do you know what? Enough's enough. I'm going to sort this out because I'm the king of these streets. I'm famous, you know, for my 15 minutes of fame on Benefit Street. And I'm gonna hunt down Lee Cooper. And I'm gonna show him, really. Probably slice him up, give him a good hiding, really and probably do another two years and get out because that was the normal for him this is what he's thinking in his mind it's normal isn't it how these people run their lives i don't know so we have to think right he's had all these text messages they're up late at night now this early hours in the morning now he's on this rampage but what he doesn't do is just go for Lee Cooper, because he can't find him probably, is one of the reasons why he didn't attack him that early in the morning. But this two hour rampage, he gets hold of um, Luke Pearson, or Pearson, uh, this 19 year old, you know, one of his little mates that he can control. And they attack this um, uh, Matthew uh, Elsley. Now, they slash him across the back and um, Really, it maimed him for life, didn't it? Because again, this man, as I keep saying to this Neil um, 
uh, Maxwell loves to use blades, he loves to use Stanley blades and he loves to leave his mark so you know, you know, don't do it again, don't upset him again or else you're going to be marked for life. Now they slashed him across the back, the back the man got away and um, really, you know, and then I think they, who else did they attack? They attacked another bloke I think and um, I think his name was James Jogger. But there was no apparent reason for that. So they was on this rampage, right? The rampage has started. So it wasn't just about Lee, was it? It couldn't have been. Because you've attacked someone else, you've slashed them up. You've also then, just as you see someone walking down the street, really, you know, and it was a school friend, I think, of um, Neil Maxwell's that they attacked. And that was this James um, man. And again, um, for no reason. So, they're in a rage, aren't they? They're high, really. They're high, out their heads, really, on it. But again, it's about the mentality of this, these two now, because you also have now this 19-year-old following along, aren't we, with Neil. You know, Neil can't do anything on his own. He likes to have a little posse with him. And usually they are younger kids and stuff that he can in, in, you know, influence. And listen, this... Pearson was 19, yes, he was probably on some drugs and he was known to have hallucinations and different things like that. Now, whether that was through a mental health illness that he had um, previously or whether that was drug-induced, it's unclear. It's unclear, but as we look at his defences, I don't think it still becomes actually more clear. I don't think there's any history of it, so it's probably drug-induced, you know, psychotic episodes and stuff that this boy was having. When you're taking spice and you're taking all these different things, this is what's going to happen. So I think it was shortly after 7 a.m. that Lee Cooper and two other men arrived um, in the street armed with hammers and a pole and a vacuum cleaner pipe. Right, so they were what we would call tooled up, right? They were tooled up. So now we think, okay, right, um, you know, Neil Maxwell's been putting out that he's gonna slash this man's face and God knows what else. The man has now turned up into the street, um, tooled up with certain different things. Um, I think, and then after emerging from the house, Maxwell and Cooper began, you know, I suppose, um, saying, come on then, do, you know, do this. They were sort of facing up to each other. But something had to give. In the end, something had to give. And what happened was then, um, I think, this, it just erupted. It was just, it was just, a, you know, I think um, Cooper headbutted Maxwell. This is what sort of people were saying, um, knocking him um, into the car and then kicking him. After the standoff, Maxwell took a weapon, and it was probably most likely the hammer that um, Cooper had brought to the um, himself, and chased Mr. Cooper down the street. He then knocked him down after that to the ground hitting him and slicing his face and body and that's when also Luke joined in so now we have two people on to one so now we have a street fight that's erupted in this street in front of these people in front of a horrific you know uh, looking at a horrific crime taking place here because it just got worse and worse and worse we've now got people fighting in the street um, they had a standing knife involved in this. You also had uh, knuckle dusters. A TV stand actually was taken off from the side of the street. And when you look at this program and you look at this street and this estate, there's also lots of furniture and stuff just being left around. You know, really, it, you know, there's lots of stuff. And what um, Maxwell did then, uh, Neil Maxwell, was pick up a very heavy TV stand and started to smash um, as. Lee Cooper was lying on the ground, he started to smash into his head with this TV stand. It was a very heavy TV stand. Now, um, he was also stripped naked and he sustained more than 100 injuries to his um, really multiple and multiple skull fractures, really. So, you know, he was hit with a hammer, he was hit with a TV stand, he was sliced up, he was stripped naked to embarrass him and everything else. And the thing is with Neil. Um, Maxwell he believed that I suppose well I'll get another couple of years for it because this is what's always happened 
and the mentality of this man even after doing this and people were screaming for this to stop they were screaming they were horrified at what was going on in you know a community that may be 90 percent unemployed not through fault of their own but through the you know circumstances of the area they live in and stuff like this had to then witness this sort of thing going on in front of their children it was horrific this crime really the injuries to this man were horrific that were inflicted by two men one age 40 at the time and one age 19 saying one of them that um you know i was uh, i didn't mean to do it well you know this is where now as the defense comes in it's very difficult isn't it when you have witnesses like this and now we come on to a bit and I'll show you now as they are arrested for this crime because don't forget Lee Cooper after this attack didn't die until 10.30 a.m. so that I think this attack started on Lee or they started a fight together at around 7 a.m. in the morning and by 10.30 a.m. that morning Lee Cooper was dead of really multiple injuries multiple injuries and we had two men then being arrested really for gbh it would have come down to as lee uh, as uh, sorry as neil maxwell would have assumed that would happen he'd go and spend another couple of years in prison you know get fed watered everything and be released out so have a look at this cctv footage and see first of all when lee um is only thought to have been injured right they think he's alive and at that point he was alive when they were first arrested and how um, Neil Maxwell talks to the police and tries to justify what he's done I mean listen when you're looking at it from a defense and um, a prosecution's point of view the defense would have had an extremely hard time um, to put up a defense for this to tell the truth because as Maxwell was in custody and he's telling the officers well of course you know I, I, I would have sliced him up I, I mean he needed a good hiding don't you think don't you think he needed a good hiding he deserved what he got you know he's lucky I didn't slit his throat and kill him that's the first part of the CCTV um, footage from inside the police station when he was arrested for probably GBH but within a few hours while he's sitting in a cell in the police station waiting to be interviewed and everything else Lee Cooper died and then they go back in and they tell him about the um, about Lee Cooper and his whole persona changes he now knows that he is up for a murder charge and so is Luke Pearson Lovely I think I was still near the so. Yeah, that lad who's in the hospital. He's just assaulted someone in his way over from. Alright. So it's here for you to try. But we may see it. We're getting you in when you're in. We're getting you in when you're in. Can we do that one time to time a little bit? It's just, it's just leaking on there. 517 I love. Big four this year. Cheese me that sound. I was thought I was told that this was gonna be alright, but he got a he got a good eye in here and he deserved it and I'm proud I did it. Everything that you see me is proud of it. He got a good eye in here for pinching my brother's motorbike, but what I did when the guy hit the floor, I left him. He tried to crack me with a monkey wrench, I walked away. I did what I needed to do. I whacked him, bust his face. When he got on the fat ground, I got him back up. I said, don't ever pinch my brother's bite again. No. And that's what I did. Is that fair enough? Attempted murder. We said, bloody chicken scratch. Yeah, that's what I did. 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 You f this morning you were arrested on suspicion of uh, attempt murder, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you're now being further arrested on suspicion of murder. You do not have to say anything, mind it's under caution. You do not have to say anything, whether it be having friends, do not mention when questioned, something which you later rely on court, and you do say we'll be given evidence, alright? Do you understand the caution, yeah? 
just so you know, further authorised detention on that arrest. So we can interview you all. So we can interview you about the allegation in an interview. We recorded that. So what's happened? Some guy's died. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. So now let's go on to the trial because now we know it isn't, you know, what, what can they do? These people, really, what can you do? You've now killed a man, right? Whether he had turned up with a, a hammer and everything else of other people, you have then come out of your property and done whatever you've done with you, chased him down the street, you have actually murdered someone on the streets in front of people with many many witnesses you've gone into a police station on your arrest you've bragged about it really you know saying that you was gonna you'd, you know he's lucky you didn't slit his throat and all this sort of stuff which will come back to hit you in the ass mate when you are now in a courtroom where this is all going to be shown plus the only footage that can't be shown on here because lee cooper's murder was filmed on cctv and it is way too graphic to be shown as part of uh, any crime and i think that's actually been a bit suppressed i think by the um the cult because of the graphic nature of that attack but every part of lee cooper's attack right up until really the last blow was caught on cctv so there wasn't much that a defense team really could do apart from say that um they didn't mean to kill him it was just you know manslaughter right so that was part of it with luke's case he went diminished responsibility uh, i'll tell you now that didn't work because really as i've said if it maybe had been on the one kill um you know the one attack which ended in the death of lee cooper he may have had a chance with that because he was had hallucinations and stuff but also you can't claim to have mental health unless you have a history of it really and drug induced um stuff like this that may only last seconds or you know as long as a drug will last is not enough as a defense so he was also both of them were charged with murder even though they both pleaded not guilty to murder and um maxwell pleaded to manslaughter and um luke then pleaded diminished responsibility now I think when we talk about the mentality of this man, as I've said before, this Maxwell, when he was in court, he was, you know, he's, he's cocksure of himself, right? He is. And you can see this if you've ever seen him on this TV show. But he said, he stepped into the witness box months and months later. Don't forget, if you look at the CCT, which you have, you will see there's no remorse on this man at all for what he did to Lee Cooper, let alone all the attacks of the other people that he actually had also admitted uh, and pledged guilty to for them as well but he steps in this box and claimed that he had amnesia due to the drug use saying that i won't be zerk i just lost it so instantaneous loss of control so it's something that he didn't remember doing he just done it and when it was all over he remembered it which is not a thing you can do when you've also attacked two people shortly before you've attacked lee cooper also that you've sent threatening texts to say that you're going to slice him up really slit his throat also when you've gone into a police station and you have been arrested for gbh charge or a you know suspected gbh charge that you are so blatant in explaining what you've done and trying to justify what you've done and, uh, and hoping these officers are going to groove you on what you've done this all comes back to bite you when you're in court so that manslaughter charge would not have worked at all it was murder because you've said you know well he's lucky isn't he that i didn't slit his throat so your amnesia wasn't there when you was talking about this and doing this stuff before but it happens to be amnesia you know or short-term amnesia when you walk into a courtroom and sit stand you know put on the stand and this is your i can't really remember it was just i just went berserk that's all i can remember no that's just not the case so um he did apologize to his victim's family claiming that he felt disgraced and gutted for the lad's family right and then he said whatever happens i deserve to get basically he's actually he listen he's talking to <laughs> he's talking to this judge and the you know um jury and stuff now with remorse now with this and he's also saying to the judge about luke 
don't give him as long time as you're giving me. It wasn't the lad's fault, it was my fault. I encouraged it and stuff. But the boy was 19 at the time of when he did these crimes. And this influence from early on, from Maxwell, I think should have been took into some more consideration to tell you them what it was in this case. I'm not justifying what Luke done at all. But I think when we look at the, this man and we look at his how he did influence younger people. This man was nearly double the age of Luke when you think about it at this time. You know, had he given him a lot of drugs and stuff, we don't know, but no jury was gonna take it and no judge, they literally dismissed everything to do with um, being lenient on Luke um, for his part in his crimes and he did receive 24 years in prison for the murder of Lee Cooper. And with Neil Maxwell, he received 30 years in prison for his part of it but it's about when you think about this Neil Maxwell even in a cult he is saying to the judge thumbs up mate yep yep I deserve it yep cheers yep yep you know um <laughs> give me the lot you know I, you, the mentality of of this man even being sentenced really was a shock at the way that he spoke and, and really thought that, you know, trying to act hard and, and stuff. You've just been sentenced to 30 years. And he tells the judge, cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers? I mean, I'd shit myself, wouldn't you, really? But do, do I think that Neil Maxwell deserves 30 years? Yes. Yes, I do. Absolutely. I think he does. I think he deserves probably a lot. I don't think this man should have been out early earlier in the crimes that he'd also done previously to that but listen whether he had done whether he ki killed lee cooper then or had not been in Al Al because he was still kept in prison for his other crimes that he had committed and we'd been harsher on his sentencing at some point neil maxwell would have killed somebody he just would have he really would have and it was unfortunate really that it was lee cooper that got in his way on that day. But someone would have always died, I think, at the hands of Neil Maxwell. Because of the mentality of the man, um, there was no way he, he was always gonna spend the rest of his life in prison. And it was, uh, it was just Neil Cooper's, I think, wrong place, wrong time, really. And also to provoke that crime by, you know, the lifestyle that these people were leading and stuff. Someone is always, aren't they, going to get injured when you turn up at someone's house with weapons or whatever else, or you're sending threatening messages. People, um, I think, like Maxwell and would, would have always had to react. Remember, he was the king of the kids, the king of the street. He ran that street. You're going to do as you're told and stuff. He, he couldn't have let that go. It was always going to end bad always going to end bad so this has been the killers of benefit street and we can talk a little bit about benefit street because if many of you come from across the world and you wouldn't understand what this benefit street um sort of fly on the wall program it was uh, you know what it was really about um you know I, I think i may have watched a few episodes i don't know if i've ever watched this episode of this this boy in it you know, but as I say, you know, it's an, an, an it was eye opening, really. It's actually an award winning. I think it was one of the highest rated shows that Channel 4 done in, around this time. A lot of the people in Benefit Street, um, some of what their stars um, of Benefit Street, um, had a lot of backlash from the public. Also, actually, Neil Mac Maxwell had a lot of backlash, and so did the programme over. Um, his portrayal of his drug use and stolen goods and everything that was put on this show. It made the police look a bit stupid, really, when you think, because it was so blatantly put out there. Um, I think Ofcom also looked into the show because of the complaints, because when these people who were stars of this show um, had lots of um, things written about them that they didn't like, right? Um, Ofcom looked into it because they said, really well the people said that they wasn't portrayed the way they thought they was going to be portrayed i i don't know how you can be you know it says it in the name doesn't it benefit street it's about your life on benefits and stuff and how you live your life normally um is how you're portrayed um ofcom rejected that there was any issues with um channel 4 had done anything wrong 
with this program and portrayed them in a different way but when we're talking about society and we're talking about people that do reality shows and stuff there is going to be backlash right because before that we had the Phil Pot case didn't we you know 27 kids and growing and then he wanted a bigger um, council house so he ended up killing his six kids really in a fire you know not meaning to kill them but to kill them you know and his married you know as well as the girlfriend married done it or the wife married done it didn't she and so there was a lot of backlash coming from that and then all of a sudden you've got this benefit street coming out with people living on benefits as i said in, in an area really of birmingham that's where it was um portraying everyday life and there's either people that love that sort of show that want to look at how the other half live or you know or you have people that are absolutely shocked and horrors by the reality of how some people live. They don't want to see it, they don't want to re be reminded of the poverty that you know was going around at that time. As with benefit changes at that time, you had universal, universal credits coming in and stuff, and a lot of people were losing their benefits and stuff like this. So there's lots of issues that was going on within this show. And that's sort of what it was about. I think they brought out then Immigration Street was the next one that they brought out. I don't know if that done very well at all. But this was the sort of show that this person was on. And the area, as I said, that they lived in at that time, you know, and I don't think it's much different now to tell you the truth, this area with the amount of people that's um, unemployed. Listen, we've got terrible issues with the police at the moment, we've got terrible issues with our councils, we've got terrible issues with our benefit system, we've got terrible issues in this country, we've got a government that don't know they're coming from left and right, what they're doing, doing about, I don't know, I don't know who the Prime Minister is at the minute because we've had so many, but no one's really concentrating on the issues of people who live in these deprived areas of our country. Now when we have deprived areas and we have no employment, you're going to have crime you are now whether that's antisocial behavior drug use stolen goods all this sort of stuff that's what you're going to have crime rate will go up as the economy goes up cost of living goes up electricity has just gone up everything's just gone up what do you think is going to happen with a crime rate this was in 2018 things are a lot worse now than they was then but when we talk about these people that go on these shows, these reality shows, and they try and save their life because they think, yes, it's a good thing, they're going to be famous, I might get something from it, I think some did have, you're always going to have backlash. But these programs are never going to hire people who do not make the news, who do not, you know, have big personalities are they? They're not after just your everyday people sitting there on the dial getting by in life quiet. They are looking for the X factor in that that's going to bring them, you know, views to their TV program. That's what these programs are about. So they do come across, I think, as a bit exploitive of people that are living on benefits and stuff, right? Because most people I work know that are working full time are probably just as hard up or worse off than some people that are on benefits. So if we're going to portray programs about our society in England, we should be honest and open about it and truthful about it and not just segregate one set of people and say benefit street. It's quite an, a, a name that's quite derogatory to me because there's many people on benefits, many and many people in this area that was on benefits that didn't have this lifestyle or do any of the lifestyles that this Neil Maxwell did. These were normal people trying to survive life, get a job in an area where there just wasn't any. There just wasn't any. Times are going to get worse and I think these sort of crimes, listen we're going to see these crimes every day aren't we really? These are everyday crimes when you look at it. What makes this crime different, which stands out, which why I'm doing it, is because the bloke came from Benefit Street. If he hadn't have come from Benefit Street, this crime would not have made the news as it did. It wouldn't have. This made national news. But if it had just been Neil Maxwell, you know, Luke Pearson, kills Lee Cooper, would that have made the national news? No. Would it have made my show? No. It really wouldn't. It made it because this man was portrayed as a lovable rogue. But underneath all that, this man was a nasty piece of work. 
which abused women, abused people, abused his society that he lived in. He really took this area down, really. When you really think about when these you know, people are trying to live normal lives and you're doing this, you haven't done this you know, area any favours, really. You really haven't. And I think Neil Maxwell's where he belongs, and actually, so is Luke. So is Luke. They deserve to be there because of what they done, and how they done it, and why they done it. So thank you for watching, and until the next time, bye bye.